Hey guys, it's Tasha. Thanks for coming back to Bridges Get Stitches. For those of you that are coming back, those of you that are new, because I've seen a few, a few new people come in. Hi, it's great to meet you. <laughs> um, I guess, guess it's been a while since I like really introduced myself. Um, I'm Natasha. I go by Tasha. Um, or Natasha. I go by both. Whatever. Whatever you want to call me. <laughs> Um, I am Bridges Get Stitches here on YouTube and over on Instagram and it's it got the double underscore I had to make it difficult so it's Bridges double underscore get double underscore stitches it'll all be sh like linked and um, spelled out and stuff down below um, so you can take a look there um, I do have um, a, a bunch of different you know comments and such that I put down there that have like any of the whips and the FOs that I do. Um, I try to keep a list of any like new starts, any, um, anybody that I happen to mention offhand because yes, I watch this back through as I edit it. And if I forget that I've mentioned somebody, I'm quick typing a note <laughs> as I'm editing. Um, so I should have all of them linked and then recommendations, all of that, yada, yada down below. If you have any questions, that's where you want to take a look. Um, I am a environmental health and safety professional in Cincinnati, Ohio. I live in Fairfield, but I work in like Westchester area. So it's all just kind of Cincinnati. Um, I um, have one daughter, um, married, three cats. Um, yeah, that's kind of the basics. If you have any questions, put them below. <laughs> I'll try to answer them. I love chatting with everybody. Um, those of you that have been here a while, you know um, generally what my content is, but for those of you that are new, this is primarily for cross stitch and sewing. Um, I have gotten a lot back into my sewing room recently, so I'm hoping to have another video up with like what I've been doing as far as like sewing and stuff. But for now, the majority of what you see on this page is cross stitch because I kind of just went like full ham on that. <laughs> my bad. Uh, I love it. I, uh, was cross stitching as a kid, fell in love with it, um, continued to like cross stitch and knit and do all of the like crafty things all through like high school and such, but then you hit college and then people start making fun of you for doing grandma crafts. And so I kind of like petered out on all of that. And then, um, after college, um, went on to masters, came out here, met my husband, yada, yada. And he bought me a sewing machine and it was like no holes barred from there. Like dive right in sewing like crazy, um, found floss tube and dove back into cross stitch. Uh, and I, yeah, I just like to be crafty. We like painted some of these paintings together. This was actually a date night one. Let me see if I can tilt it without making you too woozy. So I basically picked a picture off of um, just Google and um, actually have it taped to the back here. And then for a date night, I grabbed the colors that we would need in the canvas and we like got together and attempted to recreate it. Turned out pretty well, so that's a dual thing. This is one I did at a painting class. Um, I'm not really a, a painter. My mom does, oops, sorry about that. My mom does a lot more of that. Um, she's really good at it. Um, but you know, I dabble. <laughs> I just like crafts, working with my hands, doing a lot of that stuff. I'm contemplating building my daughter a big playhouse in the backyard. <laughs> I have big goals, big dreams. But hey, if you have any ideas on that, send them my way, <laughs> please. Um, anyway, that's way more description than you ever needed. <laughs> but hey, great to see you again, or welcome if you're new. Um, I will go ahead and dive in with like cross stitch and such. And then um, Lenny like sort of life up updates and stuff will be at the end. So I do have two FFOs. You've seen both of these previously as FOs, but I finally got around to finishing them. The first one is It's a Sure Thing by Bucilla. And I had shown the frame that I was gonna use and I'd kind of like smush it all in there and stuff um, just to show, but now it's officially done. I went ahead and I used the acid-free tape and I used the flat fold um, technique that uh, Nicole from Stemex Stitch does. Gonna write her name down. <laughs> See, this is how I do it. Um, and 
so I used the acid-free tape for that, um, put it in this frame, and this is going to my mom. There you go. This was um, one of my older kits, and it turned out really well. Super pretty. Yeah, there's an FFO. The next one is hanging with my Nomies. This one was also a kit. I want to say Dimensions, but I'm, pro I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but I had finished the stitching on this a while ago and I decided to um, use like just the generic like patch version. So I folded all the corners over and just sewed it right on. I didn't think it really needed a border. My husband agreed. Um, and like the tote bag idea um, was suggested by a few people. I know Stitches with Cat Hair, Derek, he suggested this, um, like putting it on a tote. And so I kind of went with his suggestion and it was backed up by a bunch of other people. So yeah, there's that one. Super cute. I love gnomes. If you, if you've been here a while, you know, I love my gnomes. These guys are adorable. They have so many other gnome patterns on the way. Like, so out front we have a flagpole and um, yes, I'm the one who goes on Amazon and orders a flag for every single holiday. Pretty much every single one is gnome related. Like right now there's an Easter one out there with um, gnomes wearing bunny hats. And before that it was um, St. Patrick's Day. So it was Irish gnomes. I kind of have a gnome problem. <laughs> anyway, so those are my two FFOs. Uh, I then worked on four whips because it's only been a week, guys. Because, of course, I had to jump on last week to tell about the sow, which I will talk about later again because I can't not bring it up. Um, but, yeah, it's only been a week. So I've only got four things to show you. That's crazy. How did I only work on four things in a week? Meh. Oh well. So uh, the first thing is No Time Like the Present, which is um, Modern Folk Embroidery's 2024 Sal. I am using, what colors did I pick? I picked 552. This is where I was last time. I'm trying to remember. 552 is the purple and 986. 86, 68? No, 986 is the green. And um, it's, it's, it's tiny stitches. I love it. Oh, it looks so darn good. And I just continued the pattern. I just kept going all the way down. Yeah. Although now that I'm wondering, did you guys, did I already show you this last week? I don't know. If I showed you on Friday, my bad, you get to see it again. Um, I'll probably cut that out. Nah, you want to see it. I'll leave it in. It's pretty. I wanted to see it, so you wanted to see it. I think these are like holdover notes from last week. It happens. It doesn't matter. It's pretty cross stitch. You get to see it. Uh, let's see. Next one is the. I don't have the picture, so we're just gonna pop it here. The um, creatively crafting uh, cupcakes muffin sal. I call it the muffin sal, but I'm pretty sure it's it's like cupcake sal because it's the cupcakes are the what you're actually. Um, stitching but it's in a world full of muffins be a cupcake and I think you had already seen so here's what was to my knowledge the last time you saw it it's hard doing this with only a week Ugh. Um, anyway so this is now where it's at I think you had seen all four of these primarily stitched again I'm saving the back stitch for June because that will finish off each of them um, and count towards a finish for June finishes for Phantom Stitching. But I did a lot of work on like the sprinkles in between the areas. I think I've just got these two areas left. The rest of them are all filled out, just need back stitching. So yeah, looking cute. This is gonna be so darn cute when it's done. Ugh. And this is the one that I said that it's supposed to have 16 on there, but um, my brain went to calendar because they're monthly and I did 12 of them and then cut my fabric and then realized, oh crap. So what I'm going to do with the other four, the bonus four that come out is I'm going to make them separate on their own Ada 
and like do little frames and like hook them around or like attach them onto the frame itself that holds this is my plan. Okay, then I worked on Afternoon Tea by Randall Spangler and um, this one, I just love watching it come together. So this is where I was the last time you saw it. I'm gonna tighten these a little bit so it isn't so loose around the edges. And um, I just, I love how the border is like winding its way. So this is where it is now. So you could like, you see all the intricate like filigree that's coming in on the frame. I think it's supposed to make it look like a frame or whatnot around the dragon, but it's so cool when that starts coming together. You get like three colors in and you're like, dang, this is cool. Um, and so on this one, I can't do Royal Rose across this way. So I'm just doing that, but I'm starting from like the center area, like the black portion or the darker portion. And that's where I'm gonna be doing Royal Rose. Cause I feel like this project will work okay with the Royal Rose. Whereas like my Wizard of Oz one, mm -mm, not happening. Um, yeah, so that's the plan. And if I had more time, you know, all that free time on my hands, if I had that, then I would grit it to make it easier on myself, but I don't. So uh, that's why I'm going to do a royal rose because I can just kind of go top to bottom and be fine. Anyway, uh, next one was Woman in a Field of Flowers. And this one is um, designed by Ida Rosa and charted by Stitch is So Beautiful. And once again, if you have not checked out Stitch is So Beautiful, you really need to because I rant and rave about them all the time. Um, I think I was I was watching um, Crow Stitcher the other day and she had mentioned that she was doing a Stitch is So Beautiful as well and loved all of their patterns. So it's catching, it's catching. So this is where it was the last time you saw this pattern and I just, I can't put it down. I just, I, ugh, I keep going and going and going. And so here it is now. Uh, I'm doing a lot of work on in the middle here, this like paler green, um, which is 522. Uh, there's a lot more of it than I thought. Um, I did get all of that pink pulled out that was over here because um, those of you that weren't here, I actually got a older version of the chart and um, mistakes were found and, and uh, Valerie updated it and like sent it out to everybody. Um, she's amazing. She was like so quick on the... Uh, on the draw to, to get things fixed and like resend out to everybody. Um, but of course I've, I had stitched the pink and stuff without that knowledge. And so she saw my put my, um, piece and was like, mm, I think you got the wrong one there. And, um, immediately sent it to me, got it updated and I got that filled in. So now I'm back on the right track and this is so much fun. Actually, after this, I'm going to take this upstairs and go finish my, uh, weekly prompts with this one because I don't want to put it down. It's so much fun. Um, this is 28 count, one over one. Randall Spangler's Afternoon Tea by Hade is also one over one, um, both full cross. Um, MFE, the um, No Time Like the Present, one over one, full cross, 36 count. And then Muffin Sal is 18 count Ada, two over two, or two over whatever the Ada block square thing, my job. <laughs> so those are my whips. Like that was quick and easy and wrapped up in a ni nice little bow for you. Uh, I do want to mention Hillary and my Sal starts on Monday. I feel like I went on and like updated everybody like, oh my gosh, we're doing a salad. It's so awesome. This is my fabric. This is what we're doing. This is the choices. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. See you there. And never told you the date that we're starting. <laughs> so we're starting on April 15th, but you don't have to start that day. Like just go over and get the chart from Whittier Stitches, grab your fabric, um, and let's show some love to this, you know, unique and beautiful, um, fancy lady. Uh, we are using 
two different hashtags for candy. Uh, we're doing the Curvy Candy Sal, and we're also using Unique is Beautiful Sal because we realize that using Curvy may be a bit offensive to some people, so if you don't want to use that one, don't use it. Um, stick with the Unique is Beautiful. Um, again, we're starting on April 15th, and please tag me on Instagram, me and Hillary, she's Subpar Stitches, and what are your stitches? Like, tag us all over the place. I want to see this everywhere. Like, send me a message with your picture if you don't want to post it or tag or whatever. I want to see what everybody does with this because this is going to be fabulous. I'm so excited. If you have any questions whatsoever, please email me or message me. I'll put all the info down below. Uh, I just want to see this like blasted all over Instagram because this is going to be so much fun, guys. So much fun. Uh, okay, so there's that. Um, I am feeling accomplished because I got all of my print fabrics or my print patterns sorted with the fabric I'm going to use with them. I'm not starting any of them yet because I can only work on 24 in 2024, like 24 at a time based on my choice for Whip Warriors. Why did I do that? Because I'm crazy. Um, but they're ready. So when I finish something, I can pull something out. It's happening. I'm like, let's do this. And then in other news, um, I put this on my Instagram, but I just kind of was fiddling around with some fabric and stuff and I made a new cross stitch bag. And so, um, give me your feedback, what you think on this. It is 14 by 12, fi like finished dimension. You've got, let me start with the back. You've got a handle. This is a flap that you can put like a pattern in. Um, it sits upright, which is nice. It fits in like tubs and stuff um, instead of the long ways. Um, I just had a lot of response on that. You've got your smaller pocket here that fits your floss. And then you've got your bigger pocket here that fits like your, your piece. But then I was inspired by Jen the Caffeinated Crafter because she does all of the like goals and such and writes them all of her milestones down on the note cards and such. And I was like, well, what if you could just do that on your bag? And so this is just plain white um, broadcloth. And you can just use your friction pen to write all of the info on like, what project am I doing? What's the size um, or like the count? Um, or like Jen, in you know, Jen's case, if you want one of these bags, Jen, let me know. Um, you can write like the goals, like you, what your milestone is, what you're aiming for, blah, blah, blah. Check those off. Um, if you're, you know, down here, like say you're missing a couple pieces or a couple um, colors of floss, put what those are so that next time you, you know, go to the store, you're like, oh, what did I need for that project? It's written right here. You don't have to go back and look at the key, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't know if you can think of any tweaks. Let me know. Um, the cool thing, oh, I of course, the reason you'd use the friction pens because then when you're done with the project, you just iron it and it's gone. <laughs> um, that was my idea for that. But yeah, uh, you know, give me some ideas. I did, of course, I had a, a nice little flub. I went to put the backing on the small pocket and I put it on the bottom of the zipper. So I was just like, yay, yay. Really? Because my hand went behind, like you couldn't get to the, <sighs> so I had to unpick all the bottom and sew it to the top of the zipper, re like bind it and everything, and now it works. So you've got the pocket, and then this pocket goes behind all the way down. So yeah, let me know what you think. I had fun with it. I don't know. I'm like my mind is still like churning about all these other kinds of project bags and stuff I want to do. Um, but I think I just need to go down and just like do it. <laughs> um, and for those of you that don't know, like I I do custom bags so I have sold a couple of them so far but like if there's a fabric that you really love but you don't know how to make it into a project bag you can send it to me and I will sew it for you and send it to you like I um I've got a couple of people um one from Canada one from California that um they are gonna have fabric ordered and sent to me I will make them a bunch of bags and then ship it to them and so you buy the fabric you send it to me there's a slight charge for me to make it and then I send it to you. So um, that is an option, you know, if you're interested, um, 
you want a project bag, you found the perfect fabric, but you don't have a sewing machine or you don't know how to sew or any of that stuff, more than willing to offer my services on that. Send me a message and I will work something out with you. Um, I just do it in my basement in my free time. So uh, I'm not a big LLC or anything like that, but I enjoy sewing. So let me help if I can. Uh, okay, so those are that's all the news I have. Um, as far as recommendations, I looked up the woman that I was talking about that did the numbers that she was just like, I, I do all these numbers. I like live on spreadsheets, blah, 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 blah. Small town stitches. Love her projects, love her mind. Um, and uh, I'm like on a binge on her um, floss tubes right now. <laughs> Um, I also want to re recommend Rita Marie's Stitching Adventure. She's got a ton of great projects and some videos out there that you should go check a look at. Um, and then a couple of people that mentioned me. Lala D Stitches mentioned me. Oh my, when I like, I saw my name on her comments and I was just like, what? Me? Like, I watched all of your videos like all of your videos you're like cool dude um i'm like low end totem pole over here and lala d mentions me okay and kaylee kaylee tenstitch oh, i love her so much such an amazing person um who else uh busy mom stitcher um crow stitcher i mentioned yeah those are the just thank you I really appreciate it. I feel like this world is like ever increasing this like community of cross stitch and I am like loving all of the people that I get to meet. Like I am such a people person and like COVID really ruined that. I don't get to like go out and hang out with people and meet people and all that. Like I've got my set group of people of friends like I have the book club that comes to us once a month I've got a couple of my bible study friends that I still chat with and I've got like my best friend from college that lives out in Kansas and um we pretty much text and that's like it and then I've got one friend from back home in Iowa other than that you don't really get much people interaction and so I get to talk to cross stitchers all over the world all day long like we are talking in our hobbit group all day long and i get to see all of these amazing projects that people work on on floss tube like all the new people that are popping up every day and um i uh, gosh i just love the the sense of camaraderie that we have y'all are great that's all i feel like i'm trying to like eloquently put words out there and they're just like jumbling up in space so you know what I'm saying <laughs> I'm gonna stop <laughs> uh okay then I've got my um my TBS for this one to be stitched and it is Moonlight Sampler by the Blue Flower and gosh this one's gorgeous I feel like I would never be able to dye the fabric perfectly for it though so I'm probably gonna have to get um the call for but oh, that owl up in the corner there so stinking cute and I just I love that like the the bench with the the woman sitting facing away from you and the dog and the cat it's, it's, it's very pretty very pretty and that, so that's on my list for that okay um and that's the last of my stitching so if that's what you're here for see you later I'm gonna stick with some life updates and then my language section um, so if you're hanging around, here we go. Uh, let's do life updates. So gosh, it's been like crazy. Earth Month is like always super busy for environmental health and safety staff. Um, it's just like, it's, it, it's probably second only to safety month in June. Um, and so like you're working on getting all of your like Earth Day, um, events and stuff sorted out we're doing like a an e-waste recycling event and of course nobody knows what e-waste is even though it's spelled out in the email um people are asking if they can bring paint non-dried paint to the e-waste pickup and i'm just like did you put electronics in it like are there batteries in it like no 
tires. Somebody asked about a tire. I'm like, well, I didn't know rubber was electronics, dude. Is there an antenna in it? Uh, whatever. Um, it's just funny. Uh, on top of that, you know, we're trying to get ready for the summer, so we um, have been doing some updates to our garden out back, and by we, I mean mostly Brian. I'm helping a little bit, but it's primarily him. Um, just kind of cleaning that up, and um, it's been nice to get out, like, in the sun, like, working again. Hopefully, it's going to be nice tomorrow, and we can, like, finish up a little bit. We do want to split some daffodils off front, but anyway, this the land that we have is larger than we're used to. And so it's like just getting things sorted um, first in our minds and then actually like doing it has been interesting and fun. Uh, I'm also trying to catch up with our blog because uh, we have like a life blog or whatnot that um, we were doing really well with until our daughter came. So I'm trying to like backtrack and like upload and like write all of the blogs for like the previous year so that we can be up to date so then we can like start writing again so that's been fun and then um speaking of our daughter lucio she um so she had surgery back in february to get tubes put in and her ad her adenoids removed because she's been having like ear infections like crazy um and during that surgery, they saw one of her lymph nodes, um, or like one side was more swollen than the other. And of course it then freaks me out. I'm like, oh my gosh, what, like, what could it be? <sighs> Worry worth that I am. But anyway, so she had a CT this morning. So that was crazy. I've been awake since 3 a.m. Cause I like kept for thinking I was going to forget my, or that my alarm wasn't going to go off or something. So I'm exhausted. Everything's fine. We got the results back within like 30 minutes and they were like, everything's normal. She's fine. Um, so I worried for nothing, but you know, what can you do? So I'm tired, but I had to get this, you know, scheduled or not scheduled. I had to get this film so I can get it out there because the sound starts on Monday. Uh, yeah. So that's updates here. Oh, and I'm also, um, those of you that know or don't know. Um, that was very vague. Good, good coverage on that one. Um, I have been a part of the healthy weight management up at um, the hospital near us. And um, there were just a lot of issues with like my hormones and stuff fighting me. And so I got on the prescribed plan. And in four weeks, I am down 12 pounds. So woohoo! That makes me feel good. Um, it's nice to get more active. Um, she put me on vitamin D because apparently my levels were like real low. So like I was on prescription level vitamin D and oh my gosh, if you've not been checked for your vitamin D levels and you are like extremely tired, that may be one of the reasons because I took that prescription level vitamin D like the first Friday because we only take one a week and my energy levels are through the roof. Like I have so much energy. It's crazy. I love it probably why I've been get, able to get down in my sewing room a lot more often. But anyway, forward progress on that. Woohoo! So those are life updates. Then uh, my final segment is the language. And so um, I, again, used Signing Savvy for today's sign of the day. So today is April 12th and the sign of the day is cheese. <laughs> so this lactose intolerant individual We'll be telling you how to say cheese <laughs> in three languages. You ready? So sign language. I guess I could back you up a little bit so you can actually see it. There we go. So it, you're not going to be up here like this doing cheese. So there's cheese. And then in French, cheese is fromage. Fromage. Then, hopefully you know it in Spanish, because it's pretty common. Queso. Cheese is queso. Okay. There you have it. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming back. And uh, if you liked what you saw, I hope that you're clicking subscribe or the bell or whatever is down there or the like or any of that jazz. And also leave me a comment, because those are, like, the highlight of my day. <laughs> Just a quick comment. Anything. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, have a good weekend. Hopefully I can get this up and, um, out for you guys tonight or tomorrow and you'll be able to see it. So 
Later.